Hello and welcome to another video on the Amiga. This time I'll be talking about graphics tablets, what's available and how to get them running on our classic Amigas. You might be surprised how easy it is to set up a moderately specced Amiga to be a useful art setup. Not just for pixel graphics, but also for general bitmap illustration. Before we start, I have absolutely nothing against mice. For certain pixel graphics tasks, I'll always prefer the position of a good mouse. There are a surprising number of graphics tablets that work on the Amiga. eBay will be your best bet, it's common to find tablets for virtually nothing. Most serial connected Wacoms should work, ApeTech and more rarely old Sumer graphics tablets. Likewise, some Aldean Median tablets should also work, but I can't vouch for those. As the Amiga generally uses the 25 pin serial port, you'll need a 25 pin to 9 pin serial adapter. Don't be an idiot like me and buy the wrong type of adapter though. If you're lucky enough to have USB ports that use the Poseidon drivers, many USB Wacom variants might work. More on that later though. Here's a list of the tablets that I know to work, some which I know do work but not quite as well, and some which I know definitely don't work. It's entirely possible there are ones that I'm not aware of, but here it is. Note that things are entirely different once you get into the world of Amiga OS 4 and Aros and other Amiga-like operating systems, they actually have better support for USB tablets. This is the ApeTech HyperPen 6000 tablet, which was incredibly cheap on eBay. You can often find them for $10, $15, or pounds. Sorry, <laughs> I know most of my views are in the US, obviously I'm in the UK. These are a great bet for some apps, and they don't cost very much money, so that's good if you just want to mess around. Particularly Artifact by Hagen Partner plays very nicely with this tablet, using the free formaldehyde drivers available from Aminet. The Hyperpen 6000 has an A6 drawing area and shortcut keys along the top that you can program to perform different functions. As a side note, personally I turn these wannabe buttons off. In early graphics tablets these were really common, but they're pretty useless as you're never looking down at the tablet itself while drawing, and most likely hovering your offhand over the keyboard anyway, so it's easier to just use the keyboard shortcuts you'd likely already know. Later tablets from pretty much all manufacturers ditched these buttons for real tactile ones, which work so much better. Anyway, I digress. This is a great little tablet with a few caveats. The pen is powered by a single AAA battery, so it's a bit fat. The tablet has a little tray for the pen, which is cute. It gives you a little space to put the pen while it's laying flat on a desk, but it's not as practical as a proper pen holder. It's better than nothing. Another point about the ApeTech is how it receives power. The ApeTech's cord is a web of different connectors, and it receives its power from a PS2 keyboard or mouse style socket. In my case, I trailed a 5 meter PS2 cable from my desktop PC. It's also worked when I use a USB mains adapter and plug the USB to PS2 adapter into that. Obviously, I couldn't vouch for all these adapters, so there are so many types, many generic, but read reviews, make sure you're not getting total cheap junk. There's no eraser, and the pen feels quite plasticky, but you'll get what you pay for, and it's a fun tablet to doodle with. The two biggest strengths of the ApeTech, obviously, are its crazy low price and the fact that it hardly uses up any desk space at all. It's tiny. Oh, it also comes with a terrible mouse you won't want to use. It's virtually weightless. Tablet mice are gross. Blech. But potentially the biggest failing of the ApeTech is it can't use the AccuPoint drivers that you'll need to get pressure sensitivity in Deluxe Paint. If your heart is set on D-Paint, go for a Wacom instead. The UltraPad was the professional line to complement the consumer line that was the art pad of the day. Either of these should work great for you. Throughout this video I will be calling it the UltraPad, although in the United States it was called the Art Z2, which is news to me. It does seem to be exactly the same tablet, so every time I say UltraPad, just swap it out for Art Z2. I don't know what the RZ1 was, I don't know why the hell they chose such a stupid name. 
the Ultrapad A5 has an A5 drawing area and a much more robust industrial feel than the Apetech. The pen uses the usual Wacom magic, something to do with magnets, How do they work? so it doesn't have a battery, and as a result it's really thin, but not light and cheap feeling. This is actually a much more comfortable pen for me than the chunky ones that they tend to give you now. Along the top of the tablet, you guessed it, a bunch of programmable buttons with no tactile feedback that you'll probably ignore. As for power, the UltraPad and ArtPad have a power in socket on the serial cable itself and come with a mains power supply. Well, mine didn't, so I had to track one down. If you end up in a similar position and didn't get a power supply with yours, be aware it's very likely supposed to be a center negative power supply. Please don't fry your new old tablet with the wrong power block. Another odd feature about the Wacom Ultrapad is this crazy little off switch. Mine didn't come with a manual, and when I first saw this, I panicked, as it looks way more like a severed cable than it does a switch. It's tiny. I've never seen a switch like that. Once I figured out what it is, I was able to power it on without any problems. So, what's it like to use? Actually very smooth. The larger drawing area allows you way more precision, and the whole experience is just a little more solid. Technically, the UltraPad also supports tilt sensitivity, which is a great feature on modern Wacoms, iPads and stuff. I don't think any classic Amiga drivers or software support tilt though, so it's a bit of a moot point. So my recommendation would be to go with Wacoms if you can find them in good condition for a fair price. I was incredibly lucky to find mine seemingly completely unused. Not a single scratch on it. I don't know who bought this, only to take it out of the box long enough to lose the power supply, but thanks. The UltraPad also comes with a nice little pen holder, and the satisfaction of having a really incredible piece of 90s studio equipment decades late. The Amiga has a few great art apps when it comes to tablet pressure support. Here's a list of the ones I'm aware of. Photogenics, Artifact, TV Paint, apparently, Image Effects, Apparently, Personal Paint, and probably most excitingly, Deluxe Paint 4.5 and above. Ideally version 5 though, as it has more comprehensive and interesting options. If your favourite app wasn't listed, please be aware that even if the application doesn't support pressure, you'll still be able to use the tablet, and it's still way more natural drawing experience than the mouse, just you won't have very little line thickness, brush opacity and stuff. As an example, here it is in Brilliance. I'll do a more thorough review and comparison of some of the various Amiga Art applications in a later video. I can't let too much creep into this video as it's already getting a bit long. Now, this is where it gets crazy. And I mean absolutely bonkers. With our modern setups, we expect to run one driver and have it work right in every application. In this case, sadly, it's nothing like that. Here's the list of all the drivers I'll be mentioning. AccuPoint drivers, in conjunction with tablet.library, pen partner drivers, Tableau Pro, and Formaldehyde. Let's start with the latest there. Formaldehyde by Chris Hodges is a free driver that works on both ApeTech and Wacom tablets. It's definitely where you should start as it has the most comprehensive feature set and a great GUI that lets you customize pressure settings and those stupid little shortcut buttons to your heart's content. Its author also made the Poseidon USB drivers. I don't have USB ports to test that, but I suspect they should work well? That seems like a story for another day, perhaps. Caveats of formaldehyde. Firstly, it doesn't work with Deluxe Paint. Oddly, in my case, when using this driver with the ApeTech in Photogenics, the pressure curve is all over the place and wrong. Light strokes register as hard ones, and so on. Also, using formaldehyde with a Wacom, that makes the pressure curves funky in Artifact. Nothing's ever straightforward. The old AccuPoint drivers for Wacom tablets are the only way you're likely to get pressure working in Deluxe Paint. They have a simple GUI that lets you configure pressure and your tablet's drawable area. This is very necessary for my UltraPad, as it's a different size to the tablets that the driver was originally made for, but it still works fine with it. 
These drivers work alongside tablet.library, which was included in the software of some old, old tablets. Seems quite hard to come by now. Luckily, someone over on English Amiga board found it at some point. You copy tablet.library to your libs folder and run the driver in the background. When you go to the pressure settings under the brush menu, finally, Deluxe Paint won't complain and you'll be able to do crazy stuff like this. Variable brush size based on pressure. Colour cycling based on pressure. This is legitimately a great feature, and something I'd love to see in modern pixel graphics apps. While researching, I thought this might be the holy grail of Amiga tablet drivers. Made by Hagen Partner, with online references to this driver working in P-Paint, artifacts, etc. I went about trawling the web for any side of these drivers. Nobody has them. But these are the only drivers that were commercial. They cost £70 new. They must work, I thought. After almost giving up, my brother found a guy in Germany selling it on eBay. A few days later, it arrived. I made an ADF for safekeeping and to share the love for all those three people who might want it later. Loaded it up. It's kind of crap. It works fine. It's very snappy. It works great in artifacts and photogenics. It has no GUI at all. Oh well. This is another free driver available from Aminet. No GUI, but you can edit the settings much like Tableau Pro by modifying the icons tool types. Functionally, on my Wacom, it's just like Tableau Pro, but without the wild goose chase and free. Pen Partner is a good bet for Wacoms, and if you have problems with the others, it's a good fallback. One of the funniest parts of all this, the main reason I tried so many different drivers, well, I wanted to get every single application working. Obviously, it was a bonus to get D-Paint working, I wasn't expecting that to happen. But P-Paint was giving me so many problems, I couldn't get it to run with any of the drivers, and that's why I bought Tableau. Oh boy. Look what the problem was. Unlike every other application where you can just use the normal line drawing tool, uh, the freehand tool, I guess that's what you call it, where you can just use the freehand tool to draw with the tablet, P-Paint doesn't support that. P-Paint has the sort of dotty line tool. That works fine. Because it doesn't have very good documentation, nothing says this. So you spend ages and ages trying to make it work, and then it turns out you just had the wrong option selected. Hooray! So there you have it. Serial tablets on the Amiga. A good graphics tablet goes a long way to making drawing a much more intuitive, natural process. It was eye-opening to see how well they work on the old Amiga, even in Deluxe Paint. Now I've said it before, but if I'd had a good tablet set up in the latter days of the Amiga, I'd definitely have kept it around for longer. My first experiences with tablets were on the Amiga, but they were awful. I had a wired pen, which had no pressure. I just didn't know this whole other world of tools was out there, until it was too late and I was on a different platform entirely. But it's great to revisit it now and give it the respect it deserves. Happy drawing. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I've included links to all the drivers in the description. See you next time. Psst. There is actually going to be a second part of this. I've got a bee in my bonnet now. I am going to get pressure working on emulated or modern Amiga likes somehow. Watch this face.